Now that we've taken a look at linear growth, we're going to look at a different type of growth called exponential growth. When we were working with linear growth, we saw the amount growing by the same number each round, each year, each month, each day. With exponential growth, we're seeing it grow usually by a percentage or by multiplying by a, a number. So our question is going to be, how do we model growth by a percent. And this growth by a percent is generally called, as I said, exponential growth. And the name comes from the explicit equation, which we'll take a look at here in just a minute. Exponential growth, the idea is we're going to be multiplying by some percentage or some amount. And so if we're doing a recursive rule for that exponential growth, we'll say, OK, we'll start with p sub 0 equals the initial value, like we saw before. And then p sub n is going to be 1 plus some rate times the previous value, p sub n minus 1. And so when we do that, we say r is the growth percent, and that's kind of a misnomer because we never do math with percents. We always change it to a decimal. And if it's actually not growing but decaying by a percent, we make r negative. So it would be 1 minus the r if it was shrinking or decaying. And then that value in parentheses, the 1 plus r, is called the growth multiplier or also called the common ratio. And the idea is whatever 1 plus r is, we're multiplying by that amount each year, month, or day over and over again. So we multiply by 1 plus r to get the first term, then multiply by 1 plus r to get the second term, multiply again to get the third term. And that repeated multiplication is what leads to the explicit formula for exponential growth, which says p sub n is equal to the 1 plus r raised to the n power, because an exponent represents multiplication over and over again, times the initial value. And this exponent of n is what gives it its name of exponential growth. So using these two formulas, the recursive formula and the explicit formula, let's see if we can take a look at some examples of exponential growth. <laughs> Between 2015 and 2016, Moses Lake grew 2%. If the population was 24,000 in 2015, what was the population in 2019? Well, we could represent this with a recursive formula. Remember, the recursive formula starts with p sub 0, the initial value, which is 24,000 people. And then we have this p sub n, which says we're going to multiply the previous term by some number, 1 plus the growth rate. The growth rate is 2%. We change a percent to a decimal by moving the decimal point twice. 
So we have 0 0.02. And that becomes our common ratio times the previous term, p sub n minus 1. Or we could also write that actually doing the addition, 1.02 times p sub n minus 1. Either one of those would work just fine. And probably the second is preferred. The problem with the recursive formula, though, is we have to find every single value along the way to answer the question that we want in the end. So it might be better to find the explicit formula. And the explicit formula says we take p sub n is equal to the ratio 1 plus 0.02 raised to the n power times the initial value, which is 24,000. Or we can do that math in the parentheses, 1.02 to the n power times 24,000. And now we have an explicit formula for the population at any point in time. Well, now that we have an explicit formula, we can find any given year by letting n equal the number that represents that year. We're starting in 2015, so 2015 is considered year 0. We need to get to 2019, which is four years after 2015. So we'll let n equal 4. And so for the fourth year, we have 1.02 to the fourth power times the 24,000. And when we do that, we get 25,978, approximately, is the population in 2019. Let's do one more example of this exponential growth. Let's say a $12,000 car depreciates five percent per year for five years. Let's model what's happening to this car over time, first with a recursive formula. Recursive formulas have two parts, the p sub 0 and the p sub n. P sub 0 is where it starts. It starts as a $12,000 car. And for the end, we've got the common ratio times the previous number. Well, the common ratio is going to be 1 plus the rate. But the car is depreciating, which means the car goes down in value. So it's going to actually be negative. And when we move the decimal point twice, 0 0.05, negative 0 0.05. Or if we do that subtraction, p sub n is 1 minus 0 0.05 is 0.95 times the previous term, p sub n minus 1. But again, we don't want to work this formula out five times with the recursive formula. The explicit formula is probably much better to work with which says p sub n is equal to the common ratio times the starting value, which is 12,000. Common ratio is 1 minus 0.05, and we just raise it to the n power. Or p sub n is equal to 1 minus 0.05 is 0.95 raised to the n times 12,000. Now that we have an explicit formula, we're ready to actually answer the question, what happens five years later? We're going to let n equal 5. And so we want the fifth term is 0.95 to the fifth power times 12,000, which is equal to 9,285. So this $12,000 car has depreciated to $9,285 after five years. 
And so this is our exponential growth. It's usually used when we're growing by a percent or decaying by a percent. We can represent it with a recursive formula or an explicit formula. Now it's your turn to try that on the homework and see how it goes. And let me know if you have any questions.